And now when I hit, it doesn't hurt. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I am at Dover Castle again. So thank you, English Heritage. Thank you, Dover Castle, for letting me film here. It is an amazing place. And it was built, well, nearly 850 years ago. And for 13 very important years, I have been working with Dover Castle, making them exhibits for the great keep, renovating them, keeping them going, really. And in other films, we're going to look at that. And there's a fantastic Channel, Channel 4 documentary from 12, 13 years ago. It's also on YouTube. I'll link to that, where it shows exactly why it was done in the way they did it, to really try and present the castle as it was made then. But there's also a fantastic group of volunteers who work here. And I've made them a demonstration box about mail, chain mail, uh, how it was made, what it was for, how it was used. So I'm just going to go through the various elements of that box now, just explaining really in a whirlwind tour, if you come here to have a look around and you encounter one of the volunteers, what might get explained to you about mail. So I'm going to show you how we start with the wire and we end up with the mail or the chain mail. But the first thing I want to say is that old French for chain is mail. So the translated term, if you call it chain mail, is chain chain. The people who built this place, they would have called it mail. So that's what I call it too. I'll talk you through the mail making process at breakneck speed. So not on a windowsill here, but in a forge. You start by forging out a thin steel rod, maybe three millimeters, eighth of an inch in diameter. And then you put it through a drawing plate where the holes get progressively smaller and you pull it through each of the holes until you end up with a fine wire of the thickness you want. And of course, because it's getting from bigger diameter to a smaller one, it really rapidly gets a lot longer. So you end up with a coil of wire. You then bend that around a mandrel. Mandrel is a posh word for a steel rod. You just bend, wind it round and round and round, and you end up with what looks like a spring, but it's made of iron. You cut that with a chisel into links. So you now have lots of well, what look a little bit in modern terms like split washers. And then what you do is you beat the ends of those flat, you punch a hole through each side, and then you close it together, and you link them in a system of what's called four-on-one for regular mail. So you have four links go through every one, and then you rivet them together. And the whole process takes absolutely ages. And this hallwork here, which is also in the castle down the armory, has actually around about 40,000 links in it. So now I have my very expensive and very time consuming coat of mail, but it's actually, it's not enough to protect me. So I'm just gonna put this here on my hand and I'm gonna hit it with this well, fairly small mace, but even that hurts. Now it will stop a sword cut, for instance, from actually chopping bits off me and it may or may not stop a spear uh, completely. You might just get spiked a little bit through it. But the thing is, it's not enough. And so what you do is you wear it over padded fabric armor. And this one is a gambeson. It's made of linen and of wool, uh, lots of layers of it. Uh, maybe you have an acaton, which is made of cotton wadding. But either way, it is a thick fabric layer. And now when I hit, it doesn't hurt at all. I couldn't do that on my bare hand. So that is what you do. Mail is not armor on its own. It's a composite armor with a fabric armor behind it. Now, if we imagine that you don't wear any armor at all, that sort of barbed arrowhead is a great thing to shoot at those kind of people because it goes in, it causes, well, trauma, obviously, and it's difficult to get out. So there's lots of advantages, lots of reasons why you'd want that. If that bladed head is sharp, it will go straight through that, almost like it's not there. But you put mail over the top, well, mail on its own, it will go through, but you put the mail over the top, and then what happens is that bladed head gets blunted as it goes through the mail. And it does not go through your padded armor, your gambeson, quite as effectively. So what that means is you wear your mail over the top of your gambeson and a bladed head is not going to really go through. You'll be safe. A short bodkin, later on, sort of not from when this was made, but they started developing heads like this. And again, it'll go straight through mail on its own. Fabric armor, it may or may not go through a little bit, probably not, but you combine the two, definitely won't. But plate armor, it's much more effective against it. In a military context, a bladed head is awesome and devastating. Because if that goes into somebody's body, the amount of trauma, the amount of blood loss, the amount of pain is massive. And they cannot fight on because you can't pull it out. Something like this needle bodkin, the trauma, the blood loss, the pain is less than with these. And 
well, if your life depends upon it, you can pull it out, you can fight on. So the thing is, there are lots of reasons that you want to use the bladed head, but this kind of armor will resist it. The needle bodkin, it cannot resist. So it will go through the mail, it will go through the fabric armor, maybe to five centimeters, two inch depth, maybe a little more. But the thing is, you put beeswax on that and it will nearly double the depth that it goes through. So I've actually done another film on that um, a couple of years ago now, so I'll link to that. But it's a really clear and definite difference. It really is. And do we know that they actually put wax on the heads? No, we don't, not for a fact. But there is an Arabic treatise from the 18th century where they talk about waxing their heads. So did they do it? I don't know. But it's just something that I'm fascinated by because I think they probably did. And in the context of mail and the context of fabric armor, needle bodkins are what you want and you want to grease them up, you want to wax them up. And that's a whirlwind tour of the mail display box that they have here at Dover Castle. Come and have a look at the castle, come and have a look at the keep and find one of the volunteers and they'll take you through this and explain everything in pretty much the way we've done it here, but in better surroundings than wherever your living room is, because there is hardly anywhere better than Dover Castle. It's magnificent. See you again.